All right, hi, you guys. Um, I was singing a lot today, so excuse me. It's going to be a little, like, <laughs> kind of thing going on. But, um, yeah, I just want to come on here and talk through two articles around uh, intermittent fasting that have come onto my radar recently. I'm going to read the first one. This is the New York Times. Um, they came out with an article the other day around intermittent fasting. And let me see, intermittent, I'm just trying to get this article up. So here it is, April 20th, 2022. So I'm filming this today on the 28th. Scientists find no benefit to time-restricted eating. In a year-long study, participants who confined meals to certain hours lost no more weight than those who ate at any time. So that right there actually tells you a lot about the nature of the study, that they're looking at weight primarily and like losing weight when it pertains to eating within a certain time frame or time window, time restrict, time restricted window, if you will. So this is also a phenomenon known as intermittent fasting, but it's not new. So calorie restriction has been around for a long time. Uh, people have been doing it for a long time. People have been fasting for a long time. People have been playing with fasting rhythms for a long time. And so one of the things you're seeing happen, I think, is this conversation unfold around intermittent fasting. A lot of the biohacker people are talking about it. Um, Huberman is always posting a ton of good research on it, Huberman Labs. Uh, I've got like Kate Stillman's voice in my ear about it. It's a big part of the, the healing spaces that she's leading, I would say. So anyways, when a, an article like this from the New York Times comes across my radar, it really stands out. It, it piques my attention. So I'm just going to read through it. And then I'm going I'm to show you another article that was written about the same study and the same data. And what I really want to try to demonstrate here is the way that a lot of this stuff gets framed, not only the, way, not only the framing of the article that's being written, but the funding of the study, like who's funding the study, for example, all of that can be very, very interesting to look into and just provide us with a little bit broader of a context, let's say. So here we go, just from the top of the article here. The weight loss idea is quite appealing. Limit your eating to a period of six to eight hours each day, during which you can have whatever you want. Studies in mice seem to support so-called time-restricted eating, a form of popular intermittent fasting diet. Small studies of people with obesity suggested it might help shed pounds, okay? But now a rigorous one-year study in which people followed a low-calorie diet between the hours of eight to four or consumed the same number of calories any time during the day has failed to find an effect. Okay, so you, she just basically set showed you what the goal of the experiment was to find out, like what the objective was, what the theory was, what they were trying to prove. Is there any difference between people consuming a low calorie diet between the hours of eight and four versus the same number of calories at any given time during the day? has failed to find an effect, and let's just jump over to this because here's the study, failed to find an effect, I think in weight loss is like primarily what they're, what they're showing here, okay, for 12 months. So here's the actual study, right? The background, long-term efficacy and safety of time-restricted eating for weight loss are not clear. Methods, we randomly assigned 139 patients with obesity to time-restricted eating, eating only between eight to four. So in intermittent fasting language, we would call that like, what is that? Like a, an eight, eight, 16, a 16, eight. You're, you're fasting for about um, 16 hours and you're eating for a window of eight hours. And look, you guys, my understanding of that is that there are benefits that go beyond just weight loss. It actually gets into like cellular health and cellular integrity. And my, my broad understanding of it is that like once you hit 13 hours of a fasting window, your body is kicking into what's called autophagy. And, and honestly, I would, I would need to like look more into that to empirically verify it. This is just some, this is kind of what I've been told. And I'm, I'm experience, experimenting with my own self, my own eating rhythms with that. And like just clocking, like how do I feel when I 
when I get a larger or wider fasting window, what is the experience in my body? Is it good? Is it preferable? And then you could, you could actually look into stuff like autophagy, which is like, I guess autophagy is, I would say it's, um, it's a big deal. It won the Nobel Peace Prize. We don't just give that prize out for nothing. <laughs> and so if there's a way you can tap into the, the findings of that, it's, it, could save, it could literally save your life. So I guess that's why I get a little bit like, there's a, there's a big red flag for me with this, this article and maybe even this study. So let's just continue here. For 12 months, all the participants were instructed to follow a calorie restricted diet that consisted of 1500 to 1800 calories per day for men, and 1200 to 1500 calories per day for women. The primary outcome was the difference between the two groups and the change of baseline and body weight. Okay, so the primary outcome was the difference between the two groups and the change from baseline in body weight. Secondary outcomes included changes in waist, circumference, body mass index, amount of body fat, and measures of metabolic risk factor. So the results here are that of the total 139 participants who underwent randomization, 118, which is 85% nearly, completed the 12-month follow-up visit. Okay, so like 118 came back. The mean weight loss from baseline at 12 months was negative eight kilograms in the time-restricted group and negative 6.3 in the daily calorie restriction group. God, there's also so many like lifestyle things that play a factor in here. Um, it's not just about calories, but let's, let's I, I digress. Changes in weight were not significantly diff different in the two groups of the 12 month assessment. Cause yeah, there's like a, what? It's less than a three pound difference. Results of analysis, analyses of waist circumference. I'm right here now. BMI, body fat, body lean mass, blood pressure, and metabolic risk factors were consistent with the results of the primary outcome. In addition, there were no substantial differences between groups in the numbers of adverse events. Conclusion, among patients with obesity, a regimen of time-restricted eating was not more beneficial with regard to reduction in body weight. So now we can go here. It's like, this is who this was funded by, funded by the National Key Research and Development Project. Do, 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 do. Fascist this. Just want to make sure I'm like seeing this right. <laughs> this is a Chinese company. <laughs> yeah, it must be. Okay. So let's just take a look here. National key R&D programs of China. Hmm. It's a project funded by the European Union. So anyways, I mean, we could look more into that. It feels like that's like a journalist angle. I guess I'm doing a small version of journalism here by reflecting my, my thoughts. And just like this inquiry, there's a lot of inquiry here. Let's take, can we, can we get a bigger version of this? No, apparently not. Um, so let's come back and that was the study, okay? What we're going to see now as we go back to the New York Times article is the way that the, this journalist, Gina Colata, frames the article in, in a way, right? Because that's also, that plays a role in how one receives information. Okay. But now, a rigorous one-year study. So even just like <laughs> that word, rigorous. <laughs> In which people followed a low calorie diet between hours of eight to four or consumed the same number of calories any time during the day has failed to find an effect. The bottom line, Dr. Eric Weiss, a diet researcher at University of California, San Francisco, there is no benefit to eating in a narrow window. So she found a doctor from a different university who wasn't a part of the study whose viewpoints align with the outcome of the study, it sounds like, okay? The study published on Wednesday in the New England Journal of Medicine was led by researchers at Southern Medical University in, I should be able to say that, but I can't, sorry, Larry, China, and included 139 people. With it. So yeah, she just kind of frames what we just read. To ensure compliance, participants were required to photograph every bit of food they ate and to keep food diaries. 
I'm so savage that I'm like, all right, what the fuck were some of those people eating like late at night? Because I just, I know myself, right? And I've been to that place where like, oh, I can be a rule breaker, you know, sometimes more than I can be a rule follower. So <laughs> I'm not, I just think that's funny. Okay, both groups lost weight. So maybe they weren't sneaking any Ben and Jerry's at night. An average of about a 14 to 18 pounds. Okay, so not not a small amount of weight. Like that's a good amount of weight to drop. And, and I think what they're trying to say here is that like they dropped that weight because of calorie restriction, not necessarily the time, the time to window. And we're, I'm gonna keep trying to tether us back to this idea that there are more cellular benefits. Like there's more subtle body benefits. If you have a spiritual practice, there's more of a spiritual benefit to aligning to fasting rhythms and they do get into circadian terminology in a minute here so let's let's plow forward here so that this doesn't become too long of a video <laughs> these were also not there is no significance between groups uh in measures of waist circumference body fat or lean body mass okay so there's other metrics that they're measuring by the scientists also found no differences in such risk factors as blood glucose levels, sensitivity to insulin, blood lipids, or blood pressure. These results indicate that caloric intake restriction explained most of the beneficial effects seen with the time-restricted eating regimen. So they're kind of putting the two up against one another. One is caloric intake restriction, and the other one is restriction but applied to time. So time restriction versus calorie restriction. And, and what usually ends up happening is like, if you're narrowing your fasting window, you probably are restricting your calories. So again, it's like, what are the benefits of narrowing the fasting window? It's like, you can get into deep rhythm with your, your eating. You can get into like pulsation with, and when you're in pulsation, it feels so good. It feels like you're just in rhythm. I talk about this all the time as a tap dancer. It's like sitting back into the pocket of the beat. And it can be really challenging because I had this huge tendency to always be pushing, always be rushing the beat. And I, I think we see that a little bit in the way that our culture is eating right now, just like a little bit, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right? Just sit back, ease into rhythm with this. Okay, so the new study is not the first to test time-restricted eating. The previous studies often were smaller, of shorter duration, without control groups. That research tended to conclude that people lost weight by eating only during a limited period of time during the day. All right. Dr. Weiss himself used to be a true believer in time-restricted eating and said that for seven years, he had eaten only between noon and 8 p.m. In previous research, he and his colleagues asked some of the 116 adult participants to eat three meals a day with snacks if they got hungry, and others were instructed to eat whatever they wanted between noon and 8 p.m. I mean, <laughs> this is just like the funny thing too. It's like, really guys? Really? three meals a day with snacks if you got hungry. I guess I've, I've run that experiment on myself and on my body. And I'm, I guess, yeah, I, I guess we're still gathering data on this. <laughs> so, but even still, it's like, I, I don't know. Like, what are they trying to prove here? And can't there be an aim that feels, it just feels like there could be a truer aim with all the resources can be put into a study like this instead of trying to discredit or disprove something, like, oh, that just kind of frustrates me. Okay, participants lost a small amount of weight because you know, they were allowed to eat whatever the fuck they wanted. An average of two pounds in the time-restricted eating group and 1.5 in the control group, a difference that was not statistically significant. In an interview, Dr. Weiss recalled he could hardly believe the results. He asked the stat statisticians, statisticians, oh boy, sounds it out, Patrick, statisticians to analyze the data four times until they told them further work couldn't change the results. I was a dovery. This was a hard thing to accept. <laughs> the experiment lasted 12 weeks. Now it looks like even one year study has failed to find benefit. So again, here's like the way she's framing this will have an impact on the way that people read it. Dr. Christopher Gardner, director of nutrition studies at Stanford Prevention, for Prevention Research Center said he wouldn't be surprised if time restricting, restricted eating nonetheless worked on occasion. So this is nice. That at least there's some sort of like alternate perspective here. I always like to see that in an article. 
Almost every type of diet out there works for some people, but the take home supported by this new research is that, this, that when subjected to a properly designed and conducted study, scientific investigation, it is not any more helpful than simply reducing calorie intake for weight loss and health, health factors. Weight loss ex experts and time restricted diets are unlikely to go away. We don't have clear answer yet about whether the strategy helps people lose weight. So again, it's like, yes, and that we're losing weight, but that's just not the arguably the most important thing that people should or need to be fasting for right now. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. All right, almost done. She suspects the diet might benefit people by limiting the number of calories they have an opportunity to consume each day. <laughs> we just need to do larger studies. Okay. Dr. Luis J. Aron, director of Comprehensive Weight Control Center in New York, said that in his experience, some people who have trouble with calorie counting diets do better if they're simply to told to eat only during a limited time each day. While that approach hasn't shown to be better, it doesn't appear to be worse than calorie counting. It gives patients more options for success. The hypothesis behind time-restricted eating is that circadian genes that are thought to increase metabolism are turned on during daylight hours. Dr. Carolyn Apovian, Director of Center of Weight Management and Wellness at Brigham Women's Hospital in Boston. So if you overeat a bit during the daylight hours, are you able to burn those calories rather than store them? She would like to see a study that compared groups of subjects who ate all day to a time-restricted eating group of subjects who also overate. Yeah, so she's pointing at like, I think, let's look at the pattern of overeating, right? And overconsumption, consumer culture. And, and the other studies, I mean, in my very, <laughs> this immediate response to them that you're seeing me give a uh, stream of consciousness. So they just seem to be like, eat whatever you want. I mean, th they did limit the calories in the first study. So anyways, whatever we want to make of that, it just kind of ends here that's like, Dr. Weiss, he said he was persuaded by his own study and the new data reinforced his conviction that time-restricted eating offers no benefit. I started eating breakfast, he said. My family says I'm a lot nicer. And you know, I'll be honest, like I, I like the way that that ends because I've recently been experimenting with breakfast. I was listening to a conversation in the, you know, in Kate's community the other day and they were talking about, I think it was like Dave Asprey and he's like big into breakfast. Oh no, or John Duyard. Anyways. I like hearing things like that. So I've actually been trying breakfast, you know? And again, it's like, you can get super rigid and strict with these things, but you can also just play, you know, play and see, like, ask your body in the moment, do I need, do I need dinner tonight? <laughs> right, based on what time I ate lunch, how much I had for lunch. And I also, like, I'm not doing this dumbly. I'm looking at what is the content that I've consumed today in terms of macronutrients, in terms of diversity of color even right? So macronutrients, protein, fat, you know, what, what, are, like glucose, glucose. <laughs> okay, you guys, so um, bear with me, we're going into this next article. And the reason I want to show this, because it's another, it's, it's not like another interpretation. Well, I'll just, I'll let it speak for itself. This is the conversation. And shout out to someone who posted this in the Yoga Health Coaching Forum. I, I brought the New York Times article on there because I was just curious about it. So I'm glad that it's opened up this um, window of opportunity for me to explore. Okay, let's just see if that. One day ago. So this one came out a day ago. I'm just looking at the conversation. I've never been on this site before. Academic rigor, journalistic flair. Hmm. All right, might be like a medium kind of situation. I don't know. Um, restricting calories leads to weight loss, not necessarily the window of time you eat them in. I would already say that that's a more um, open-minded title for it. <laughs> For an article about a study that, that had the results that it had compared to the New York Times, new study finds no benefits for time-restricted eating. Okay, so now look at this one. Restricting calories leads to weight loss, not necessarily the window of time you eat them in. Results of a new weight loss study. Let's just verify that we're going to the same place. Yes, it looks like it is. Okay, good to know. 
that's our due diligence. <clears throat> Oopsies, where were we? That's the Chinese research and development thing. Oh, maybe it literally took me there. Back. Okay. Research of a new weight loss study were published this week. Results leading to the headlines proclaiming intermittent fasting isn't a magic diet trick after all. Oh God. So like, I thought the New York Times one was, was like dramatic. Look at this one. Why intermittent fasting isn't a magic diet, diet trick after all. I won't even go through this, but like you can tell even just from the ads and everything on here, this is not a, <laughs> it's not a site I want to be like consuming my information on. But again, entertaining multiple perspectives, just seeing what's out there. Let's keep going on this one because it looks like a really, it looks like there might be some credibility here. And integrity, like that's what I'm searching for too. Like whose integrity in reporting on this stuff? The researchers aimed to test whether adding a restriction on what time of day you were allowed to eat or not to the usual low calorie or kilojoule diet led to greater weight loss compared to just following a low calorie diet. They recruited 139 adults whose average weight was 88 kilograms and aged 32 years. Hey, it's like my demographic. The participants were randomized to follow either the low calorie diet that had reduced their usual daily energy intake by 25% or the same low calorie diet with the addition of time period of a time period during which they were allowed to eat in an eight hour window between eight to four each day, okay? She's just, again, laying out the same thing that we already know, but I'm just bringing us through all of this. The approach is called time-restricted eating, a 16-hour intermittent fast. Both groups received support for health coaches to follow their diets for 12 months. Oh, interesting. Health coaches. I've heard of them. Research showed that one year, that after one year, people in both groups lost 7 to 10% of their baseline body weight, while the low-calorie group lost an average of 6.3 kilograms. The low-calorie plus time-restricted eating group lost 8 kilograms. Although there was a 1.8 kilogram difference between both groups, between the groups, it was not statistically significant difference. Participants in both groups are also had better blood sugar and blood fat levels and improved insulin sensitivity. Okay, so they both benefited, but again, there was no significant difference between the groups. So now we're seeing she's breaking this up into she or he, I don't know who this article was written by, Stacy Morford, she. Um, four reasons this weight loss trial is important. One, it wasn't based in the US. Most intermittent fasting studies have been conducted in the United States. This trial was done in China, recruited people in, I gotta learn to say this, Guangzhou, I don't know. So it provides important data using a culturally sensitive prescribed calorie restriction over 12 months. Two, it showed small extra time restrictions on eating don't make much difference. In their normal lives, the participants of Guangzhou had a usual window for daily eating of about 10.5 hours. It's already not bad. Actually, some people don't even get 12. It's like really, yeah. 12 fasting hours is what I mean. Studies in other populations, particularly the US, show about 90% of adults have an eating window of 12 hours, with only 10% of adults having an overnight fasting period greater than 12 hours. There you go, I just said that. So that's like, that's interesting. And it does make a difference, right? Studies in other populations, particularly the US, show about 90% of adults have an eating window of 12 hours with only 10% of adults having an overnight fasting period greater than 12 hours. Wow. I don't... This was back in 2021, time-restricted eating and metab metabolic syndrome, current status and future perspectives. So it's like, you guys, we could, we could just keep going. <laughs> it's like, there's so much we could look into here. So I'm, I'm making this video because I don't want you to just like see headlines in the New York Times and think this is truth, this is fact right? Science is science, but like, you got to look at like what, look at these uh, facets that they're presenting here. Why she's saying the study is important, that it was first of all, not based in the States. It shows small extra time restrictions on eating don't make much difference. Because now she, I wonder if she's going to get into fasting windows. This is what happens when I just <laughs> read an article live, you just get my stream of thought. Okay. 
For more than 50% of people in countries like the US, the overnight fast is less than nine hours, meaning they eat over 15 hour time period each day. Oh my God. So in the current study, the time restriction on eating was only minor at about two hours less per day than what people usual for China. This would not have been too big a difference from usual. So yeah, that's like, that's what I was thinking this could go is when you start to really, I think, experience some of the deeper benefits of fasting, it's when you're letting yourself really get empty. I mean, you start doing a couple of those like 24s, even 18.6. And again, you guys just like Kai's in this, break it down into small pieces and like take a step, half an hour, then an hour, then another hour and listen to your intuition to guide you. And, and this is one of the reasons I'm making this video too, is like, just so you know, like the, the information that's out there and have some context for all of this. Researchers also reported that in China, the biggest meal is usually eaten in the middle of the day. That's huge. So it was not influenced by time restriction. In countries where the evening meal is the biggest or people snack all evening, then time restriction may still be a beneficial to reduce intake. 2020 review of 19 studies that used time-restricted intermittent fasting found it was an effective treatment for adults with obesity, leading to greater loss of body weight, body fat, and significantly lower systolic blood pressure and blood glucose. Glucose. So 19 studies. That's a lot. A review of 19 studies. Okay. Hmm. Number three, it shows support is imperative. Both groups in this trial were given a lot of support to adhere to the kilojoule restricted diet. They were provided with one meal replacement shake per day for the first six months to make it easier to follow the kilojoule restriction and help improve the adherence to diet. They also received dietary counseling from trained health coaches for more than 12 months of the trial. For the 12 months of the trial, they received dietary information booklets that included advice on portion size and sample menus. Guys, this is huge. You want to talk about why people are getting results? Boom, right there. They got support. You want results? Get support. They were getting. <laughs> That's so funny. It's so funny to see the way like, the Times was framing this. When here you are, this, this author did a great job of just like outlining support is imperative, okay? Follow-up calls, WhatsApp messages twice a week met with health coaches individually every two weeks. You know how much like a lot of us yoga health coaches would charge for something like that? Yeah, so they got support. In the second six months, they continued to fill out their dietary records for three days per week and received weekly follow-up telephone calls, WhatsApp messages, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so... This was a lot of support and is very important. Receiving long-term support to achieve health behavior changes typically achieve a weight loss of three to 5% of body weight, which significantly lowers risk of weight-related health conditions, including 50% lower risk of developing type two diabetes over eight years. If, <laughs> if you were on the fence about getting support in your healing journey, I'm, I'm just highlighting that for you. Number four, even with good adherence, individual weight loss varies. Individual weight loss response, responses were very variable, even though adherence was high in this trial. About 84% of participants adhered to the prescribed daily calorie targets and time-restricted eating period. So guys, I take back everything I said earlier about them cheating. Like <laughs> there might've been some cheaters, but I didn't know that from the Times article. She didn't talk about the health coaches. She talked a little bit about it. There might've been like a sentence. This one goes, I mean, it's so cool how she's framed this, these four bullet points that she's ending with here. But anyways, I digress, we're almost done. Weight loss at 12 months varied from 7.8 to 4.7 kilograms in low calorie only group and 9.6 to 6.4 in the low calorie plus time restricted eating group. As we have seen many times previously, this study confirms there is no one best diet for weight loss. It also shows small decreases in the window of time you're eating probably won't make a difference to weight loss. So if I had to pick a favorite, I'd pick the second one. But what do you think? You tell me. I'm curious to hear your opinion on this. Leave it in the comments. Um, thanks for listening to this. If you liked this video, let me know what you liked about it. And hope you stay tuned for the next one.